Hey friends, it's Lisa. Welcome and thank you for watching another one of my videos. So today is Sunday, February 28th, 2021 for a second there. I forgot what year we're in. And this is the week eight review of my week prior where I just talk about the pros and cons, the highs and lows of the week. I've been doing this all year so far and my goal is to do it as you know as much as I can throughout the year so the first thing that I want to talk about is a gift that I received from my partner so we are about to celebrate our anniversary I actually was a bad girlfriend in that I did not get a gift for him but we we're like planning things and but anyway he got me a gift and I was like oh, Oh gosh, but it is something that I am so excited about. I didn't know that it was coming and I have the box here. I think the box is easier to show, but it is this air compression leg massager. And when I saw this, like I thought this was like a solid leg piece and I got so excited because I was like, screaming that I was going to be a robot like I was just so excited for this but actually it's actually over there maybe I'll just show it I kind of just put it on the couch it's right there it there there are things you can wrap around your leg and slip your feet into and then they velcro and then basically there's a remote and there's different settings but basically and I'm saying basically a lot, but it fills with air, compresses, and then releases. And and why he got me this is because I, of course, have been laying on my back a lot in the last couple weeks. And I was just mentioning how, in theory, when things are good and great, like back massages don't really, like they feel One of my Google devices just went off. I could like hear it. I'm not talking, no, maybe it was Siri with my work phone over there. I like heard the thing and it's like, no, 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 I'm not talking to you, I don't need you right now. But like leg, I feel like the legs are overlooked. I love leg massages. When I go and get a professional massage, like the back, I'm always kind of like, that's too hard, that's too hard, no matter what. But like the legs, I just feel like get overlooked and when I get a leg massage, I just feel so at peace and happy. And so he gifted me this air compression leg massager and we've been sitting, we have recliners at the end of each end of the couch and just kind of like taking turns <laughs> since Friday night and putting it on our legs and just, it goes in an auto, uh, like an auto 20 minute run cycle. And so for 20 minutes, just kind of sitting there and getting my legs compressed, which sounds strange, but it just feels so amazingly nice. And so that gift is definitely one of my highlights for this week. The second is really something that I just learned about this morning today on Sunday. So I am a Yelp fanatic. Yelp, if you don't know, is a website, it's global, and people go there to review it used to be primarily restaurants, but it can also be non-restaurant type businesses and attractions. But anybody can sign up for a free account and review or look up reviews. But if you review enough, you can be nominated or nominate yourself at the end of the year to become a member of the Yelp elite of your community. So I have been a member of the Yelp elite community of Philadelphia. I think it's 12 years now, which is amazing because I have never committed to something other than Milo, my relationship with my dog for that long. Like that's pretty darn amazing. But in reality, or in all seriousness, I just really love reviewing things. It all started because an old boyfriend and I went to a restaurant and the waitress treated that boyfriend like absolute crap when he was ordering and was like disrespectful and mean. And I was like, oh no. Like I went on then I was like looking up to see if anybody else had a problem. And it was like, I had found Yelp. It was in 2009 and it was like, oh. 
And so I've been yelping ever since. My point being, me talking about this, is that I found out today that I had the Yelp Philadelphia review of the day on their homepage. Basically, every day, the Yelp community managers pick a review of a business and they find if that review you know that review has to be extremely helpful has to have votes on it from other community members that it's been helpful or maybe that it's funny and it really boosts up a restaurant or a business and so since i've been living in this area of new jersey i've gotten two reviews of the day uh, i got one last year as well and i was really excited but this year or excuse me, today, I found out that my review for business called Chick's Deli has been nominated. And basically it's because they have amazing cheesesteaks. And I'm, I'm not gonna say much more than that other than they have amazing cheesesteaks because you can, if you really wanna look, Yelp Philadelphia, Ch Chick's Deli, find out all the information about them. It's just really cool. And because the Yelp community is really awesome, all these people will like message you and give you compliments like congratulations on your Yelp review of the day and like great job and it's like you know I looked at my phone and I'm thinking oh my god what are all these messages and then it was like great job on the review of the day and I was like review of the day Woo! that was really awesome and a highlight I've had a pretty good week I don't really have much to complain about uh but I did read well okay here's the thing do you consider completing a book via audible or an audiobook format do you consider that reading or just listening so tangent side note we're over here now i had a discussion with my friend and i had mentioned how i was reading such and such a book on audible and he's like you're not reading a book you're listening this doesn't count as reading and i was like well yes and no yes i get what you're saying like i didn't read the book but i don't know i feel weird being like I listened to this book like I just said like yeah I read I read this book but I feel now that like I have to announce if it's an audible book or if I read it via physical book or Kindle so this week I purchased and finished two books one via my Kindle one via audible the first book I'm going to talk about is was on my Kindle and it was a sequel to the book that I read in one night last Friday so this book was called written in starlight and it was a sequel to a book called woven in moonlight and the author's name is isabel ibanez i bought it on kindle because i thought well there's only two books in the series i read the one it was a quick fast enjoyable few hours of a read and it like let me escape mentally which is what i really enjoyed so i was going to give the second book a try i just didn't enjoy it as much it kind of, uh, the storyline was a little bit different, but I was reading it and it just, I was like, okay, You're kind of dragging on. And then at the very end, because when you read on your Kindle, I don't know if it's default or if I set it up, but not only does it have the page number, but it has the percentage complete. And so I knew I was getting there. It was like 90% complete and like, we still hadn't really gotten to the the point of the book. And then it was like within the last 10%, actually in the last 8%, because 2% of the book, 99 and 100, was basically the acknowledgements and just the, the other tidbits that would be in the back of the book. So from 90% to 98%, it was like, so much happened and so much of it out of left field and i was just i was like what and i mean it was okay neither book i just want to state neither book was like the best book that i've ever read like i liked the first book because it kind of was like a little mental vacation but it's not my favorite and but it was good but the second book was just kind of a letdown and yet when i read the reviews prior to buying it people some people were like this is better than the first one and this is such a great book and I just didn't agree with them so the next book I want to talk about is something that I bought and listened to via audible so I don't know if I technically read this book but um it's called The Housekeeper by Natalie Borelli I had never heard of this book before except via Goodreads which I am currently 
using again. I used to use it like back in the day, like mid 2000s and then completely forgot about it. And then I just was like, okay, now I'm going to use it again. So if you're on Goodreads and want to be Goodreads friends, let me know. Um, but someone I know in real life who's on Goodreads um, had just finished it and rated it very highly. And I had two credits available to use via Audible. I'm on the one credit a month plan. So I had two months worth of books, credits that I hadn't used. And I just, I had just finished Fear is My Homeboy, which I had listened to via Audible, which is nonfiction. And I kind of just wanted a fiction book. So this is, it is a psychological thriller. The book cover says, she's a liar, she's a stalker, she's in your house. I was like, ooh, psychological thriller? Ooh, girl, I wanna read that. Listen to it, whatever. We'll, we'll continue this debate later. Um, I hated it. I felt that the anti-hero slash protagonist was a crap garbage person, and she did crap garbage things to good people. And at the very end, spoiler alert, she is a hero and the person who she victimized with her weird, crazy stalker tendencies and antics was like, it's all water on the bridge, like we're good. And I was like, she's a, she needs a serious mental intervention. Like she needs a professional therapist. Let's not gloss over all of this. I felt like, I think that's the biggest problem that I had with it was that we're in spoiler territory, if you don't mind. This person did crazy stalker things. The whole premise of the book is that she lies about her identity and becomes the housekeeper for someone that she wants to have revenge against. And she's her living housekeeper is sabotaging her, doing all of this stuff. And then she's like, there's this like mental game where she thinks that the, the person that she's victimizing is actually onto her and Anyway, in the very end, it's like, all is good. They're kind of friends now. The girl that she victimizes is like, in her life, like fully lets the crazy person, and I don't wanna say crazy, like, lightly. I mean, this person needs serious mental intervention. Like, but she lets her like, watch her kid every day, and it's all good, and I feel like it's one of those 80s movies where the there's a freeze frame of them all laughing at the end, like, ha ha. And I'm just like, this is shit, guys. Like, this is horrible. And I hate the fact that this story is totally glossing over that this person can just, just turn off being an awful garbage person. Like, she needs mental help. And and then there's other parts where, because I was listening to it, I'm like, scream. I listened to it on my phone. I was like, screaming on my phone, at my phone, like, about how angry I was towards this person and like how awful I thought whatever was happening was happening and I was cringing and it was just like not enjoyable and I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I mean, maybe if you like those psychological thrillers but I feel like psychological thrillers like Girl on the Train or Girl and the Woman in the Window or the lady on the boat like all of these new books that have come out in the last few years that are female driven psychological thrillers where we don't know if we can trust the protagonists and they're maybe not the greatest people but like do we trust what they saw or like are they lying to us like they're un uh, reliable narrators i i'm kind of over it so that's it guys i like i said i don't have much this week although i kind of went into that book rant a little harder than I expected. But if you liked this video or found any information helpful, please think about giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing. I do these Sunday wrap up videos every week and I try to post them also on Sundays. But that's it. And until next time guys, hope you all stay well.